Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, today's workshop is called Memory Tricks, and the reason that next week's workshop is called More Memory Tricks is because I know a lot of tricks, and I can't get them all in one workshop, so more of the same next week. If you find today's workshop helpful, which I hope you do, and you're able to come back next week, that would be great because that way you'd get sort of the full teaching on this. If you're not able to make it next week and this is the only one you come to, hopefully you'll still get something uh, good. Um, my first thing that I'm going to do with you today is to show you, hopefully, the power of that word, the word tricks. Um, I gave a workshop last week called How to Remember for Tests, so that was the first memory workshop. But for this one, what I want you to try to uh, understand and sort of value is the fact that if you learn tricks or shortcut ways to do things, it makes it so much easier to memorize lots of things for school, and it makes your memory look even better than it is now and I'm hoping it's pretty good to very good, but it makes it look even better. And so most of you uh, have probably seen magic tricks performed before, uh, either in person or on TV. And if somebody is a good magician and they do a trick and you watch carefully and try to figure out how they move the elephant from there to there or cut someone in half and put them back together, if they're good, you can't figure out how they did it and your mouth drops open, wow. But if you find out how they do the trick and you realize, oh, that's just a cute little trick, and then you see the magic trick again, it's not so special anymore because the magic is gone. Well, I want to show you two things to start with, and I'm actually going to do this next week too. This is like your mental warm-up before I get to the main teaching. Um, I don't know what your attitude is toward math. Some people love math. Some people, okay and some people hate math with a passion. I ran into a former student today and I said, how are all your classes going this semester? She said, fine, except math. And that's how she says math, math. And so if that's you, you're gonna learn something here. If you like math, great. A few of you might have seen this before, but again, it's not to teach you math as much as it is to show you the power of tricks, okay? So I'm just gonna take a few minutes with this and then we'll move into the main uh, section of the workshop, okay. If I asked you to do this problem, which I don't want you to do actually, but if I asked you to do this on paper, this is 35 times what? 35. 35. Now even if math is your weakest subject, if you wrote down that problem and you did the problem, I think everyone here could come up with the right answer. You know, it's not that difficult. But if I told you that you could actually do this kind of problem in two or three seconds in your head, most people, even if they're not great at math, would think, oh boy, you don't know my mind. I can't do something like that. But if you know the trick, it's easy. Okay, so here's how it works. When you have a two-digit number that ends in five and you want to square it or multiply it by itself, all you have to do is one simple thing, and that is look at the first number, which in this case is three, multiply it by one more than that. So this is tough math. What's one more than three? What's three times four? Twelve. That's pretty easy, right? Well, twelve, and then you do one more thing, and that is stick the number 25 on the end, and then you're done. That's it. 1,225 is the answer. People, when I show them that, they say, wait a minute, but how did you, and you know what I always say? Who cares? As long as it works, you don't even have to know why it works, it just does. So if I give you 65 squared, you're supposed to be able to know how to do that quickly unless I lost you over here, which is okay. It's six times seven, which is 42, and then 25, okay? And that's it. When I show this to people also and they learn how to do it and they think, wow, that's fast, you know, that's good. One thing that they ask is, does this work with all numbers? And my answer to that is, no. If it worked with all numbers, we would all be math majors, right? Because this is really easy. But there are a lot of other math tricks, a lot of them, and I'm gonna show you one more in a minute. But here's what I wanted to, to tell you. Um, I have actually had students try this before, and whether you do this or not is up to you, but it's kind of fun to experiment with it or to try it, and that's this. Um, 
once somebody learns how to do this, even if they don't understand why it works, but they just know the two little steps, very often I've had students go up later today to someone they know, family member, friend, classmate, somebody, and they walk up and they hand them a piece of paper and a pen or pencil and they say this. And if you do this, this is what I want you to say. You say, I want you to choose a number that is two digits and ends in five and you square it on paper and I'll do it in my head and we'll see who finishes faster. So in other words, you're trying to show off your great math ability, okay? So the person looks at you and I've had people even do this with family members who knew they were bad at math and this really blows the mind of somebody like that. So they say, okay, two digit number that ends in five, you say, yeah. They say, okay, how about 25? And so they write the problem the way that it normally is written. By the time they finish writing the problem, you should already know the answer, and they haven't even started figuring it out yet. Um, what's the answer to this? 625. Yeah, 625, because it's 2 times 3 is 6, 25. So what you do to impress them is before they've even done anything, you tell them the answer. But you don't say it like this, 625 you have to have an attitude about it. You say it this way, 625. Like, come on, give me something tough. And they're gonna look at you and they're gonna think, get out of here. And then they're gonna start going through and doing the problem the normal way. And then at the end, they get the same answer that you got. And they're gonna look at you, I guarantee you, and they're gonna say, how did you do that so fast? Okay, if they ask you, this is the only time I'm ever going to say this ever. Lie. Don't tell them, okay? Say this. This is my favorite thing. Say this. I can't tell you how I do the problem like that so quickly, but I've been lying in bed till 2 o'clock in the morning every night learning to move the numbers in my mind. And they'll look at you and go, wow. And they'll say, I wish I could be as good as you are. And then here's the hardest part. You have to have a straight face, no smile and whatever. You look at them and say, well, you keep working on it and maybe one day you'll be as brilliant as I am. And that's hard for you to say because you know that it's just a simple trick. But what they think when you're able to come up with something that fast is that you're basically doing this. And you're doing all these things and you're not doing any of that. Well, it's kind of nice to be able to do something like this and impress somebody. Okay, now. If they ask you a day or two or three later, if you see them again and they say, can't you tell me how you do those problems so fast? I'm still thinking about that. Go ahead and say, all right, I'll tell you. And then show them this and watch their great admiration of you just drop. And they'll just look at you like I thought you were special. Because it's not special. But if you don't know how to do it, it looks fantastic. Okay, so that's the idea with tricks. And then I'm going to show you one other really fast one. And then I want you to uh, kind of get ready for the main teaching today. I don't know how many of you have ever seen this, but it's even uh, more fun for me than the other one. If you're given this problem, which is not hard to do at all, but it just takes a little while to get it done, if you know the trick, you can do it in one second. Okay, what's six plus two? Eight. Eight. Done. You didn't even multiply anything. And it's a multiplication problem. That's pretty odd, okay? 54 times 11, five plus four, Nine. and so it's 594. So you can do that in one second, and the other person is still one times this, and you look so brilliant, okay? And it's because you know the shortcut, you know the trick, okay? So that's the idea, and again, I'm gonna give you a few more of those next week. Some people have said, can you do a whole workshop on math tricks? I should probably do that sometime, because I know a lot of them. One of the things that I love about this, about these math tricks, is sometimes when people learn how to do them, and they show them to somebody, and the other person's impressed, it's the first time in their life that they've ever felt power over numbers because they hate math, and they start to kind of get into it a little more. Well, one of these days, maybe I'll do that. But for today, the main thing that I want to do is I want to show you uh, three specific things that have helped students to score higher on tests, okay? The first one, and this is kind of the, the first of two similar ones, is I'm gonna explain a little bit about how acronyms can be used to help you get better grades on tests. And um, 
The big key, and I'll explain this more in a couple of minutes, is that acronyms normally are words and they're made up of first letters of other words. And all of you have used these before in your life, but most people didn't even know what they were called. And so I wanna give you three practical examples of how these can help you under the pressure of a test to remember everything that you're supposed to. Okay, the first one is sort of a common idea for an acronym, and that's the word HOMES. And this word is a very common word that everybody here knows, but actually this is this great powerful memory trick. And it doesn't so much look like it when you see it, but it is. This is a help in a geography class, more than likely, and it's to help a person to memorize the five great lakes that are in and around the state of Michigan. And memorizing five things for a test, no big deal. But if you had a hundred other things that you had to learn, the trick is how can you stare at all of those when you're studying and then when you get to the test, remember them all? Wouldn't you maybe forget one or forget two or forget three? So the way that acronyms are almost always written is vertically, it works better that way. And then I'll just go ahead for this one so you can kind of get an idea. These are the names of the five Great Lakes, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. Okay, and again, those five things by themselves are not that tough to learn or to remember, but I want to show you something. Uh, by the way, when I teach students how to create acronyms and how to write them, it usually works really well when you do this when you're done. I always kind of encourage that, and that is to draw a box around it so that the actual acronym kind of pops off the page. It just makes it a little easier to remember. Well, if you were required on your test in geography, among other things, to write down the names of the five great lakes, and you got to that question and you thought, okay, I studied that, I know that was in my notes or in my book, and I know I had it somewhere, and you're trying to just find one of the lakes here, one here, one back here, and you're just searching for them. That's a lot of pressure on, on a test. But if you've memorized this, which just takes a little practice, then when the test comes, all you should have to do is write these five letters, and everything else should just come spilling out of your brain. Uh, acronyms work well for people because each one of the letters is kind of like a little hook that you hang a word on. And so it tends to, even under a nervous type of situation on a test, it all seems to come back to a person more than if they just stared at the names and hoped that they would remember them. Okay, so again, uh, this is a word, the word Holmes, made up of first letters of other words. Um, the second one, I think we have several people in here who probably will recognize this one. I don't know if anyone uh, knew that from your previous experience, but this one, is pretty common, Rainbow. okay? Rainbow. Yeah, right, so these are the colors of the rainbow. When would you ever need to know that? Well, I guess if you took a rainbow class, uh, yeah. geology, you know, whatever, okay? And so this is a man's name, right, Roy G. Biv, even though there is no man with that name. I don't think there's ever been a man with that name, but you can pronounce it like a name and it's simple and easy to remember. Now, this is a class participation moment, so even if you've never seen this before, I want you to try to see if you can come up with these. Everybody should know the first five. After that, it gets a little harder. So what's this one? That's very impressive. Sometimes it gets so quiet when I get to the eye. Indigo and violet, those are a little more obscure. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue are very you know, easy. Well, if you memorize this and you just practice it a few times, you would never forget it. And it may, there may be a, never be a time in your life where you need to know the seven colors of the rainbow, but if you ever do, now you know, okay? So that's a second one. And then my third example of acronyms, my favorite one ever, and other than one or two people in here who I know would remember this, everybody else would never know this, and that's because I made it up. So it's not in a book anywhere or whatever else, I made it up. And so I want to teach this to you backwards, and here's the way I'll say it. Um, several years ago, I had a student who came to me in a real panic. She said, I have a test next week, I have so much to memorize, I'm gonna forget a lot of it, can you help me? And I said, okay, what's the class? 
And when she told me, I got nervous for her. She said, it's anatomy. <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever taken anatomy. That's scary, okay? There's a lot of stuff to remember, and it just kills your brain trying to just memorize them. Um, I said, what part do you need help with in particular? She said, well, everything. But one thing that I'm especially worried about is this. My uh, teacher told us that one of the things we have to memorize for the test is the 10 organ systems in the human body. And I said, well, why are you worried about that more than some other things? And she said, because of the way it's going to be asked. And I said, well, what, multiple choice or true false? She said, oh, no, much worse. She said, fill in the blank. Just like that. Now, everybody here has taken enough tests in your life to know this. What happens to a lot of people's minds when they see blanks on a test? Yeah, you go blank. Okay, um, multiple choice questions, which you've all answered many times before, are not always easy, for sure. But the answer is right there. Just waving at you. All the other fake answers are waving too, and you just have to recognize which one is right. But when it's fill in the blank, there's no help anywhere. You either know it or you don't. And she said, I'm going to look at this list and I'm going to study it for hours of all 10 of them. And then when I get to the test, I'll forget half. So is there a trick? Is there a way I can do it? I said, I have an idea. Let me try this. Um, I asked her an important question related to this. This is what you always need to ask first, and that is, do you need to know all 10 of them in this order, the way that I see them on the paper? And she said, no, any order is okay. As long as I write them all down, I get credit for them. So I said, okay, that's good to know. I took all 10 of the letters and I wrote them on a piece of paper, tried to move them around and make a big 10 letter word that she could use just like this to easily remember those. Couldn't do it. It's hard to take a bunch of letters and turn them into a huge word. So I thought, how about like this? This is actually like a couple of acronyms. How about if I can find a couple of shorter words, use the same letters, and it would help her just as much. And I played around with it for a minute and I found it. And I told her this, the same thing I'm going to tell you, and she had the look on her face that you're probably going to have. I said, I found it. This is going to help you. This is great. I'm all excited. And I told her this. Here's what it is. I said, it's nicer drums. That's going to help you on your test. And she looked at me like, what in the world are you talking about? She said, what does that have to do with the body? I said, nothing. It doesn't matter. As long as you have these letters to hang the words on and you practice, you're going to remember it. Well, um, some of you are more science oriented than others, and I'm going to go through these really fast. Um, if you're going to end up being a nurse, a doctor, x-ray technician, something in the medical field, this would probably be good for you to know. Everybody else, you can just sort of learn it for a second and then forget it, okay? This is the nervous system. I'll skip that one for a second. Circulatory, endocrine, reproductive, digestive, respiratory, urinary, muscular, and skeletal. So all those systems you have. Now, um, anybody know what the I stands for? I always like to ask that because I embarrassed myself that day when I was helping her. I do that all the time. Uh, and it had to do with this one. Anybody know that one? Okay, a lot of people think immune system or they look down and they think intestines. They're just like anything I have that starts with an I. But actually, when I saw this word, and most of you have never seen this word before. A few of you probably have, but most of you haven't. Have you ever seen that before? Uh, most people, I looked at it and I said, integumentary system? I said, I don't have that. I don't have any integuments. I don't even know what that is. And so my student taught me. Teachers learn something every day, just like students do. And she said, yeah, you do. And I said, I do? What is it? And she said, well, it's all your outer covering. So it's your skin, nails, hair, and all of that. And I said, oh, yeah, I guess I do. So I learned something that day. And I'll never forget this, even though I'm never going to need it ever in my life. But I know it. Okay, so what we did was I went back to this with her and I said, what's this one? And then what's this one? And she kept forgetting some, remembering others. And then we went back over it and she remembered the others and forgot the others and was just kind of struggling with it. But after about five or 10 minutes of this over and over again, she was able to rattle off every one of those just like I did for you. We practiced a little more and then she took that with her and she studied it. 
as the test was approaching. How did she study it? Well, she said while she was driving. She's just thinking, 10 organ systems, nicer drums. N is for nervous, I is for integument, and just kind of went over them. Takes like one minute. While cooking, while walking, while doing whatever, just sort of pull it up in your mind, go over it, and then you're done. She told me later that when she went to take the test on this material, she turned the page and there it was. Name the 10 organ systems of the human body and then 10 blanks. And, and I said, so what did you think when you saw that? And instead of saying, I started panicking and I, she just said, I smiled. I said, that's good. Smiling on a test is good. And then I said, what was the next thing you did? And what was the next thing she did? Yeah, she wrote, nicer drums, got them all, 10 out of 10. Like she had, you know, had a little memory pill. Easy, okay? Well, um, after she told me that, she said, thank you for teaching me that trick. And I said, you're welcome. And then she said, but at the same time, I'm really angry with you. And I thought, wow, I, I can't help anybody. And here's what she said. She said, I got a C on the test, the whole test. And I said, well, a C is not a great grade, but this is anatomy. If you pass a test, I mean, that's a great achievement. And she said, yeah, but why didn't you teach me tricks like that for everything? I needed to know, then I would have gotten an A. And you know what I told her, and I think you kind of know this already, even though I haven't gotten into this much, you can't use tricks like this for every single thing you need to learn for a test. You get so confused, you'd start mixing up the tricks and everything else. Every once in a while, when you have four, five, six things to learn, this works great. Other times it doesn't work at all, and you need other tricks. That's what we're getting to right now, okay? So that's uh, three examples of how acronyms work. Um, let me go ahead, by the way, so I don't forget that, and start the sign-in sheet. Again, uh, I want you to try to listen to what I'm teaching the whole time, but when that gets to you, fill it out, pass it along so we can get it all the way to the back. Um, the other one that I wanna show you that is similar, and we'll just take a couple of minutes with this, is um, acrostics. And acrostics use first letters of words usually, just like acronyms do, except acrostics are not words, they're sentences instead. And so um, one very simple example of this that some of you may be familiar with is that. Uh, those are not, uh, that, that's not an acrostic because that's obviously not a sentence. Anybody recognize those letters? Mm -hmm. This one is for music. Anybody in here who's ever taken music lessons ever in your life, one of the first things you had to learn how to do is to read the notes. That kind of helps so you know what to play. But it's really hard for people when they're learning music to learn the notes, and that's because these five letters are the five lines on the treble clef in music. And trying to memorize these is pointless because it doesn't mean anything. It's just a bunch of letters. And so there's a sentence that is in almost every music, beginning music book, that helps a person to remember this. And a few of you may know that. What is the sentence? Every good boy does fine. Yes, it's every good boy does fine. Um, that's a little bit of a strange sentence, but where do those words come from? Like, what does that mean? Well, E, G, B, D, F, always the first letter. Okay, so if you memorize that, it would help you to remember what each one was. But I wanted to show you two other quick things about this. Uh, I've learned in recent years that most beginning music books don't have this sentence anymore. They changed it. That was the sentence for a long, long time. Um, food. Everybody loves food. And so here's the, one of the new ones. Every good boy deserves fudge. So if you like chocolate, you like fudge, that makes it easy to remember. And then I wanted to tell you this really quickly too. Uh, last semester, a student told me something I'd never heard before. And that was, he said, I learned uh, music to learn how to play the piano, but I didn't learn it this way. I didn't learn it with uh, other deserves fudge. I learned it with Sesame Street. And I said, what? And he said, here's what I learned. Ernie gave Bert dog food. 
I love that one, okay? Uh, so in other words, it can be any sentence you can think of as long as each word begins with the right letter. And so you can just use your imagination almost on that. Okay, and then the other one that I'm gonna give you as a little example of this has to do with something that I know some of you have learned before, and that is in the subject of math order of operations. What's the yes. sentence? Mm -hmm. And the, what's the whole sentence? Yeah, the, the normal one is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, even though there are other versions of that. And the purpose behind this one is that when you're at a certain level of math, you're under a lot of pressure because you have a problem in front of you that has several steps. And if you do the steps out of order, you get the wrong answer every time. And so you're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, what do I do first? Well, the P, stands for parentheses, and then the E is for exponents, and then multiply, divide, add, and subtract. So this helps math students at that level to remember, what am I supposed to do first? And usually they remember it well, even under the pressure of a test, because they learned it as an acrostic. Okay, uh, one more thing about this. Students have asked me, is it better to make an acronym or an acrostic to learn something? And my answer is always, it's better if you can to make an acronym because it's easier to remember a word than it is a sentence. But sometimes, like in this case, you can't make an acronym. And can you take these letters and move them around and try to make a word out of them? No, and that's because you need to know them in this exact order, so you're kind of stuck. So this is the preference if you can, but sometimes this is what you'll need to do. And again, you can't learn everything in college by way of acronyms and acrostics, but it gives you an idea of how you can apply that. All right, so um, we're going to spend the rest of the workshop today with kind of part one of something that uh, a lot of you have never heard of never tried before, and if you do this correctly, it's the best memory trick I know. Those two that I gave you are good, but this is even better. So this refers to the idea of mental pictures. And when I teach this to students, most of them uh, just look at me like, did you make that up? Well, I didn't make it up, but I've used it a lot, and it helps me to remember a lot of information. I'm going to share that with you in just a little bit. So a mental picture means this. Close your eyes, get a picture of something in your mind in a certain way, and then it sticks and you remember it. Okay? Everybody here has good imagination, even if you think you don't, and you're able to kind of see things in your mind. And if you learn to do it right, it's amazing how much you can learn. So the way I'm going to start this, and I'm going to just take a few minutes with this, but it's important, is um, the five qualities of good mental pictures. If all you do is close your eyes and try to get a picture of something, then it's almost like you've taken a nice short nap and it doesn't do you any good. But if you do it this way that I'm about to explain, it works great. So I'm going to give you the acronym SPACE, which is a word, that's why it's an acronym, and each one of the five qualities starts with one of these letters. The first one, which I could talk about for a long time, but I'm just going to give you a little idea, is stupid. Stupid. Um, I think every day when you wake up, you think, please don't let me do anything really stupid today. You know, we try to avoid stupid, but when it comes to memory, stupid is wonderful. And that's because the more bizarre, weird, stupid something is, the more you're able to remember it. And I always tell people, I don't want you to think about this too much, but think about all the weird things in your brain, all these things that you remember that you don't even want to remember. You wish you could just push the delete button and it's all gone, but you have all this stuff in there and you can't get rid of it. Well, I'm going to show you examples of these in a, in a minute. The P stands for play on words. And I want to illustrate what I mean by this. Um, I'm going to ask everybody here, including those who are really tired, so this always makes me scared when I ask people to close their eyes. If I hear snoring, I'm going to come over to you, but hopefully you'll be okay. I want you to do this. I want you to look up here and see this word, okay? And then I'd like to have everybody just take a few seconds, and I don't want you just looking at me. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to get a picture of a lion in your mind. Okay, now open your eyes. Now that should have been very easy, right? But 
How about if I ask you to close your eyes and get a picture of that? Um, if you could do that, boy, you're way better than I am, right? You could close your eyes. <clears throat> Look around, no, don't see one. Uh, you can't see this because there's no such thing as this. But when you use this method, you have to see something as a picture. So you're kind of stuck. This is easy, this is impossible. So what do you do? Well, an example is this. Can you get a picture of this in your mind? Yes, is it the same as that other word? No, but it's a play on words, which means a rhyming word, a word that sounds like another word. And again, I'm going to show you how this actually works in a minute, but that's an important part of this because if you can't see it in a picture, you can't do it with this method. Okay. The A stands for action. And this is something that a lot of people never think about related to memory, but it's definitely true. And I'm going to illustrate it. I want you to look up here, look for just a second at my hands. Okay. Which one do you look at first? Yeah, this one. Why? It's moving. moving. Well, what's wrong with that one? It's just there, right? Is this more interesting than this? Well, if I did this for like 30 more seconds, you'd stop looking here. You'd think, man, that is boring. And then you'd look over here. But at first, your attention is drawn to something moving more than something that's standing still. So when you use this method, if you learn how to make it not like a photograph, just frozen in your mind, uh, you're going to remember more. People tend to forget things like that, but if it's like a video and there's movement involved, you tend to remember it more. It helps it stick in your mind. Okay, and then the C, I'm going to talk about for just a minute because it actually has two different meanings to it, both of these very uh, important to the success of this method. The first one is your vocabulary word for the day. And uh, if you already know that and use it in your vocabulary, great. If not, it's a really good word to start using in your spoken vocabulary and, and on paper. The word vivid means clear, but it means something more than that. And so what are a couple of other words you could use to describe vivid besides clear? Visual is possible. Any others you can think of? Bright. Bright is good too. Um, the word vivid in this case means uh, alive, in focus, bright, sharp, like that. And then here's my favorite thing because everyone will understand this. Last semester, first time ever, it shows how life is changing. So I asked, what does vivid mean? Somebody said bright, alive in focus and then one person raised their hand and they said this HD okay everybody here knows what an HD TV looks like whether you have one or you just walk by it in the store and you look at it like that's alive it's like coming right off of there that's the way you want your pictures to be and if they're not that way it's not gonna work and so I want to show you one more thing before I write the other uh, here you don't have to answer me on this, but in just, just a couple minutes ago, I asked you to close your eyes and get a picture of a lion. So the question is, when you closed your eyes, did you see a lion? And some people, here's what they say. I asked them that question, they say, yes, I certainly did. I said, oh, good, describe it for me. Well, the head was on the left, tail was on the right, it was facing me, had a really big mane, and they're describing it as if it's right in front of them. That's good. That's what this is. But, and again, you don't have to admit to this, but I know every time I do this with a group, at least a few people, here's their answer. I say, did you see a lion when you closed your eyes? And they say, no. And I say, no, no. Well, did you close your eyes? Yes. Did I ask you to see a lion? Yes. But you didn't see one? No. And I say, why? And here's their answer every time. I don't need to. I already know what a lion looks like. In other words, it's all just intellectual. I don't need to see it. Well, that will kill this method faster than anything else. You need to see it alive as if it's right in front of your face. And if you do, this will work great for you. If not, it won't work. Okay. And then the other meaning of clear is this, not confusing. 
So if you learn to create a very stupid, weird picture of something in your mind, you want to be able to see that later and know what it's a picture of and not sit there thinking, what is that? So the last little one, and then I'm going to give you some uh, applications of this, is the little phrase, easy to see. So you, when you do this method, you need to learn how to create pictures where it's not so crammed and crowded, but just a few here and there, and it's easy for you to see in your mind, and then you remember it, okay? So these are the qualities, and so what we're gonna do for the rest of the workshop is to figure out when would you ever use this. And I'm going to actually show you uh, one or two more applications of this next week if you're here for that workshop. But I'm going to give you one specific one now that is my favorite one. And this is, again, like a good use of mental pictures. And it is in remembering names, people's names. Um, how are you with remembering people's names? Yeah, every once in a while somebody says, good, I remember most names, but most people, that's the way they look. They say, terrible. Uh, some people say, I'm really good with faces. Really good. Don't remember names at all. And everybody here has had this happen to you before, I think, some more than others. You meet somebody, you introduce yourself, they introduce themselves, you talk for a few minutes, you say, okay, nice to meet you, leave. See them again a few days later, a week later, they will come walk right up to you and they remember your name. And whenever somebody remembers your name, that makes you feel kind of special. But you're also horrified at the same time because, yeah, you don't, you're just, hey, buddy, how are you doing? And you can't remember their name. If you could learn how to be really good at remembering names, this gives you an advantage in your personal life, in school, in business, lots of different areas because most people are terrible with names. So if you get good at it, it gives you an advantage. Well, how do you remember somebody's name when you meet them? You actually have a lot of different uh, ways to do that. There isn't just one. But the way that I want to show you involves this method. And if this, what I'm about to show you, if this seems really weird and stupid to you, then just remember, oh yeah, that's good. Okay, so here's the example I'm going to give you. We're going to do this with two names, okay? You meet a lady with no hair. I'm not going to draw the hair on there, but you meet a lady at a party or a meeting or something, and you want to remember her name. It's important to you. And so we're going to start out with the easiest name I know for this, and then we're going to get to a hard one. Okay, you, her name is Sandy Campbell. And so what you're supposed to do when you use this method is to look at her face, think of her first name, and come up with a picture that this reminds you of and put the picture somewhere around her face in your mind. So when you hear Sandy, what's the first thing you think of? Yeah, most people think of sand, like at the beach. Is that the only right answer? No, it could be other things. It's your own personal way you think. But if you pictured her uh, and you wanted to say, okay, I want to remember when I see her face next time, I want to remember her name is Sandy, what could you do? Well, here's Example, some people say, I picture sand all over her face, in her hair, and I just want to go up and start brushing it off. So a really weird picture, sand everywhere, okay? That's one. Other people have said, I would picture a big sand castle built right on top of her head, like she's wearing it like a hat. That's very bizarre too. Other people have said, I would picture her buried in the sand all the way up to here, and the only thing sticking out is her face. As long as the face is right in the middle of all that, whatever you come up with, as long as you see it in a very clear way, you're going to remember it, okay? Now, the last name is often very difficult for people to remember, maybe more than the first, and so a lot of times you have to divide the last name into parts and come up with pictures for those. But we shouldn't have to do that here, which is the reason that I start with this one. Uh, Campbell. Yeah, most people think of soup, okay? So if you have done something with this poor lady's face in your mind and you want to remember her last name is Campbell, what are you going to do? Well, <clears throat> I want to hear a couple of suggestions from you to see how weird your imagination is. Yeah, she could be eating soup and we got to get more bizarre than that, right? So what else could we do? Okay. 
what some people have said, and sorry about this, I know it's gross, they've pictured cream of something soup, like cream of mushroom or cream of chicken, and they just pictured it just dripping right down her face, and maybe the sand is washing off. That's pretty gross. Other people have said, I picture these little cans of soup as like earrings. Other people, big can on top of the head, whatever. So you just let your imagination kind of run crazy, and then when you're done and you see that as if she put it on and she's wearing it, then next time you see her, you walk up to her, Sandy Campbell, how are you? And she says, wow, you remember my name, that's so nice. And little does she know what you did, and you don't want to tell her this either, because then she'll run the other way. But that's the way that this is done. Okay, now this is an easy name. Most names are not that easy. So I'm going to give you one more. And this is a very hard name to remember, but it's a good illustration of this too. Okay, um, anybody know who that is? Yeah, <laughs> that's me. Okay, so that means if I see any of you after today, you better know my name because I'm going to teach you how to remember it. Okay, this is how I become famous or infamous or whatever. Okay, so I want you, remember when you do this, you're not supposed to think. You're supposed to just react like the first thing that pops in your head. So when you hear Scott, Scott, okay, a lot of people, first thing they think of is Scott tissue. So they think of toilet paper or uh, Kleenex or whatever. So then I say, okay, you have a real face in front of you now. What are you going to do? And they look at my face and they're trying to figure out. And I've had people say things like, well, I picture Kleenex coming out of your nose, you know, like it's a dispenser or big rolls of toilet paper instead of my ears or something else like that. What else does Scott sound like or rhyme with? Yeah, scotch tape. Other? Right, uh, all kinds of possibilities. Which one of those is best? Whatever one you come up with, because again, that's the way your brain works. But I'm going to give you an illustration of this. Um, scotch tape is what some people come up with. And I say, OK, that's good. So what are you going to do? You know, you got the face right here. And they look at me and they say, well, I picture you holding some tape. And I say, yeah, but. Come on, we got to go more stupid than that. Otherwise, you're not going to remember it. So then they picture me wrapped up like a mummy in tape all the way up. Or some people have said this, and they get very excited when they say it. I picture this big piece of tape right across your mouth. <laughs> and I thought, why are you getting excited about that? But anyway, that's what they say. Okay, so uh, we think, okay, we got my first name. Well, last name, you have to know how to pronounce the name because if you don't, you can't do it. You're playing with the sounds of the name. So my last name is actually mispronounced by almost everybody. That's the way it's actually pronounced, is Breckner. So if you take this part, the Breck part, what does that sound like or remind you of? Breck. Brick. Brick. What else? Break. Break. Breck. OK. Breakfast is one that people come up with a lot. And so I say, what are you going to do to remember that that's my name? And they start giving me the scariest looks anybody could ever give me. They're looking at my face. And <laughs> eggs here, sausage here, <laughs> bacon here. They just stick my whole breakfast all over my face. If that works, great. Other people have said the word brick, and they think, well, like bricks, like on top of your head. And that works fine. If It's not exactly right, but it's close. Okay. And then the last part of the name, the N-E-R, ner. What are we going to do? <laughs> Most of you, I think, know what nerd means. Okay. Uh, if you don't, uh, you'll learn something. But I wanted to show you something really quickly, and that is a lot of people um, think differently than other people. We kind of know that. And I've asked some people, I said, I want you to just listen to this, and then the first thing you think of, say it. And I say, ner. And you know what some people have said? They say, nerve. And I say, nerve? Why nerve? And they say, well, I'm in biology. We're studying the nervous system. I close my eyes and I can see nerves. And that's just the way their brain goes. Other people say, I wouldn't think of that at all. I would think of Nerf ball, nerd, you know, whatever. So whatever you use, whatever works for you is good. Well, um, 
there are all kinds of pictures that you could create for somebody to be a nerd and uh, whatever you came up with you try to play around with the sounds and all that you come up with something strange around the face and then if you see it in a clear way then the next time you see the person you'll remember now I wanna um, tell you a couple more things and we'll finish up with this did the sign-in sheet make it all the way around okay you can just it's okay I'll go ahead and get it afterward but nobody missed that Okay, good. Um, what I want to tell you is this, let you in on a little uh, secret. I always tell my students this. Every semester, the first day of class, I say something, and as soon as I say it, I think, why did I say that? I shouldn't have said that. And that is, I tell all my students, I'm going to learn all your names in the first couple weeks of the semester. And this semester, I have 160 students, or at least had the 160 at the start. That's a lot of names, okay, especially for an old brain. Well, I learned them all. I know them all. And that makes me look like I'm some kind of memory genius. How could you remember that many names? It's a trick, okay, that makes me look better than I really am. Just like everything that I've shown you today, starting with those math tricks. So um, I learn some of my students' names by just looking at them and looking at the name and it kind of clicks. Other people, I can't remember their name. For some reason, it just won't get in there. Whenever that happens, I use this method and create these weird pictures around their brain around their head and then when I see them the next few times I see those pictures I remember their name and then after a little while those pictures disappear they're like a crutch you know that you need for a little while and then once you know the name you don't even need it anymore and they go away the fact that I'm able to remember hundred and sixty names me is even amazing to me because I can barely remember where I left my keys or whatever else but I can remember that because I use this trick all the time and if you've learned this and you kind of get the idea of it, what a lot of people tell me is, I understand what that says, but I could never do that. And I say, why? And they say, I just don't have a good imagination. And I always say, yes, you do. You just have to learn how to apply it for this. So this is the last thing that I'm going to leave you with. And this is just a little mental exercise for you to do even as you leave here. Uh, I know that you know your name. If you don't, we're in trouble, okay? But if you met someone and you wanted to teach them how to remember your name this way you would have to create picture for your first name and last name so the question is what does your first name sound like rhyme with how about your last name think about that and some people find it very easy because their name sounds just like something or whatever other people say wow I, my name doesn't sound like anything but if you think about it long enough you can figure it out think about a friend of yours you already know their name, but think about their name. How would I create pictures? And once you start doing that with a few more people, it starts getting easier. And I can do this pretty well just because I've done it for a long time. So it's like any skill that you develop as you go. Okay, so just uh, give it a try. It's kind of a fun thing to do as well.